Baseball in the Burrows, presented by Verizon. Six games left for both the Yankees and Mets before the All-Star break, as both teams will look to close out the first half of the season. They're going to try to do that strongly. But let's talk about both the New York baseball teams. We're going to do it with a host for WFAN, my guy Pat Boyle, who joins me now. Pat, what's going on, man? Dax, appreciate you having me, bro. Always good to chop it up with you, man. Definitely good to chop it up with you. And I had to talk to you because we were both in the studio the other night there at WFAN. You were getting a lot of calls talking about the Yankees and the Mets and where they are right now in the season. So let's do this. Let's start with the Yankees, who went from having the best record in baseball to losing 15 of their last 20 games. And the question for me is this. Who are the real Yankees? Are they the team that we saw at the start of the season or the team that currently looks like it's in a tailspin? Well, they're, they're probably a little bit in between, let's be honest, right? I mean, that's the old saying in baseball. You're never as good as at you when you are at your best, and you're never as bad as you are when you're at your worst. But this 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 tailspin's troubling. It's ugly. I mean, they're, they're literally one of the worst teams in baseball over these last 20 games. The 5-15 and 15 record says enough of it. But the way that they're playing, I mean, it's, it's, it's everything. Everything that they did so well in the first 70 games of the year hitting you know guys one through nine other guys in the lineup coming through with big hits verdugo anthony volpe even glaber torres was was having a hot streak at least in some parts during this season and now and the pitching they were getting six innings of of great pitching from every single one of their starters it feels like every time they turned it over to the bullpen they finished the job none of those things are going right now so it's whatever can go wrong will go wrong it's murphy's law whatever law it is it's the it's the law of the yankees because we've seen them do this before too 2022 they got off to a historic start and then they limped for most of the second half of the season got out of it and they got back to playing good baseball but then they get knocked out in the al uh, in the alcs swept by the astros last year they started off okay and aaron judge's injury played a huge factor into that but even then with or without judge they went through the huge tailspin so this isn't anything new for the yankees they they great job by them getting off to such a hot start but now the cracks have been shown in the foundation. There are some serious flaws in this team. The starting rotation is ugly. I mean, guys, you know, Carlos Rodon, Luis Hill, the rookie who looked like he was on track to start the All-Star game, Marcus Stroman, all those guys were pitching well. Now it's, you know, flip a coin whether or not those guys are going to get out of the fifth inning. The lineup, those guys I mentioned, Verdugo, for the most part, he's been in a huge slump. Same thing with Anthony Volpe. They moved them back out of the, the, the leadoff spot. Ben Rice had that historic three-homer game, but you can't expect a rookie first baseman who just got called up to keep doing this. Anthony Rizzo getting hurt didn't help, and he wasn't hitting well before then. Same thing with DJ LeMahieu. Has an, he looks washed up. And Glaber Torres now you know, is not hitting that well. And the bullpen is uh, is hurt and not to make excuses for them but it's all three facets and they haven't stolen a base in like over a month so there's nothing going right for the yankees right now they're not as good as they were when they were 50 and 22 they're not as bad as they look right now they're somewhere in between but you know we went from saying this is the year the yankees they uh, they trade for juan soto they should win a world series they should get there tough to say that now yeah it is tough to say that now you're right i think you're being having a good perspective here and saying that Things are somewhere in the middle there, Pat. And the Yankees, they need to clearly get back on track. They have back-to-back -back three game series at Tampa, then at Baltimore. How much of the Yanks finishing strong before the break has to do with something that you mentioned, their pitching rotation and just having them pitch like they did earlier in the season? Yeah, well, I mean, like as much as I said, it's a little bit of everything. If you do want to pinpoint one thing sure you know we know starting pitching pitching good pitching wins your championships good starting pitching is ultimately what's going to get the yankees out of this funk right now we know hitting is cyclical right so there you know again guys are going to go through some slumps it's tough when it seems like it's everybody that's going through a slump except for aaron judge and juan soto and even soto is going through it a little bit so if the yankees don't figure it out hitting wise it is the starting pitching right now that needs to carry the load so Garrett Cole he looked a lot better than he did in his first couple of starts coming back for his season debut they need him to be an ace every time he takes the mound they need Carlos Rodon a guy that they're paying 30 million dollars plus a year to right now or close to that they need him to figure it out right because he's supposed to be the number two in this rotation that's how they're paying him last couple of games he's looked shaky I mean we saw him basically in tears in the dugout a couple of starts ago so yes I would agree with you Dex 
it, it's got to be the starting pitching. They need their starters, which were the best in Major League Baseball in the first three months of the season. They need them to get back to that because if the offense, again, you expect the offense to kind of find it sooner or later, but right now for these next six games, the Rays, who we know always pitch well against the Yankees, and the Orioles, who have looked like the best team in baseball, they've overtaken the Yanks for the division lead. They need to get it done with the starting rotation. They need their starters to go out there and be and be horses for them. Oh, you're absolutely right. First 72 games of the season, Yankees pitching was the best in baseball. We talked about this 20-game stretch, which they've lost 15 of these last 20 games. The pitching has been the worst in baseball, so definitely they need to turn that around. As for the Mets, they're coming off of a disappointing road trip. They split a four-game set in Pittsburgh. The team is a game under 500, and they finished the first half with six games against two teams who are also below 500, the Nationals and the Rockies. Do the Mets need to be above 500, Pat, at the Midsummer Classic to show that they're serious about contending for a wildcard spot? Yeah, I mean, you certainly don't want to be under 500, and that's that's where they are right now is, uh, you know, on this Tuesday afternoon as they get ready to play the Nationals and then the Rockies going into the All-Star break. And it didn't – it seemed like this team – was going to be over 500 after they went on a heater in the month of June, 16 and 8 in that month. They've kind of come back to earth lately, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. The bullpen, the big reason why. Um, you know, I mean, if they lose five out of six to the Nationals and Rockies, it kind of it feels like it just totally changes the complexion of the season. If they're a game below 500, you know, if they if they go three and three these next six games, doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. So yeah, we're talking about the trade deadline being three weeks away. We're hearing names now starting to get thrown about across mid. Major League Baseball. The Mets want to feel like they can be buyers after they looked like they were going to be, you know, selling off everybody that wasn't pinned down to the floorboards a couple of uh, a month and a half ago. I would say, yeah, yeah, you probably got to win these two series here. You got to go four and two and get back over 500 if you want to take yourself seriously as a contender and if you want to show to David Stearns, the new general manager of the New York Mets, that hey, it is worth buying at the deadline, adding to this team, and, and selling off a couple of, not big prospects, but a couple of prospects in your farm system to go and try and chase a World Series championship. Sure. I think the Mets fan would sign up for 4-2 and two winning both of those series right now. Now, we talked about the need for the Yankees to get their starting rotation right. Does the Mets bullpen, which has been a major cause of concern over the past couple of weeks, do they need to get things right? And what will you be keeping your eye on with the pen over these final six games of the first half? Yeah, I mean, they've, they've been atrocious, Dax. I mean, let's be blunt. You know, they, their ERA as a bullpen is over eight, basically, here in the last 20 games. Um, it, you know, no lead seems to be safe. So right now, that is the biggest issue far and away. It's not even close. The offense, although not as hot as they were in June, still performing pretty well. You're getting good depth and good length out of most of your starters. So yes, it's that bullpen, which Edwin Diaz, that 10-game suspension for the sticky stuff, really, really hurt them. I know they were basically 500 without him, but now that he's come back, uh, we already saw manager Carlos Mendoza go to him for a four-out save back on Sunday, blew the save. Now the Mets offense picked him up, and then he finished things off in the ninth. But they can't just rely on Edwin Diaz, four-out saves, you know, God forbid, five-out saves to get the job done. They need some of their setup guys, Adam Adovino, Reed Garrett, uh, to pick them up here. And the Mets bullpen has been ravaged by injuries as well. But no team's going to feel sorry for you. Every team in Major League Baseball is dealing with injuries. So if the Mets have a one- or two-run lead in the seventh or eighth inning, you're holding your breath if you're a Mets fan. Like, don't kid yourselves here. And uh, it's going to be whether or not those guys can can keep it together and then if Edwin Diaz can be the closer that we know he can be because he's had a very rocky season. He, he started out great in the first month, and then he couldn't get anybody out. He would get within tears in the clubhouse. Then they sent him to the IL. He was hurt, came back, pitched well, then gets a 10-game suspension. So Edwin Diaz, you need to see consistency out of him. You know, again, Forget about the other guys. That's going to be a tough sledding. But if you get to the ninth inning and Edwin Diaz is in the game, you need him to be the best version of himself over these next couple of weeks. Otherwise, the, the Mets have no chance. They will be slogging around at a 500 ball club for most of this season, and they're not going to be a playoff team. Mets going to need their closer to be a closer. We'll see if he can do that. Last thing for me, Pat. Here we go. you got to pick one of these two ball clubs. Who absolutely needs a strong finish before the break more. Is it the Bronx Bombers or is it the Mazes? Both teams want to finish well, but which team needs it more? Who are you picking? 
I'm going to go with the Mets because their season kind of feels not like it's on the line, but like we said, you know, you want to prove, hey, trade deadline coming up. They're kind of uh, right now on the fence. Should we buy? Should we kind of stand pat? Is it worth, uh, you know, trading away a couple of prospects to try to get some bullpen help if we really don't think that we're going to be a playoff team either way? The Yankees, I feel like, could use the trade, uh, the, the all-star break right now, no matter how they do these next six games against Tampa Bay and Baltimore. The Yankees could lose six in a row, and yes, it will feel like the sky is continuing the fall and you're going to hear people uh, continue to question whether or not Aaron Boone should hold on to his job. I think he should. I think he can win a World Series with the New York Yankees as the manager of this team. I don't believe that he is responsible for the uh, the, the, the spiral that this team is going through. Um, but the Yankees n just need to get to the All-Star break, get a couple of days off, breathe and reset, and hope that they can come out of the second break with their tails on fire. The Mets is much more... Um, it's much more pressure and time sensitive here because, like we said, they're hanging around the wild card spot. If you want to prove that you can be a playoff contender and that you should be adding at the trade deadline and not standing pat or, God forbid, selling, these next six games really, really mean a lot more for the Mets than the Yankees. All right, there you go. Got your answer being the New York Mets. An important six games, final six games of the first half for the Mets and the Yankees. We will see how both teams do. That is Pat Boyle. Check him out on WFAN, one of the best hosts on there. Pat, appreciate the time. You're talking some Mets and Yankees. We'll talk again soon, my friend. You're the man, Dax. Always appreciate hanging out with you, brother. Anytime.